All right. So, uh, like I said, a little bit about me. I've been around for uh, almost 20 years. Um, my site, Underground Trader, uh, started off as a blog, even before even before the, anyone knew what a blog was. All right. And basically, we've had our finger on the pulse of the markets from the So's Bandit days, the good old days with the fractions and the big fat. Uh, your your lowest increment was a sixteenth, you know, or an eighth. Um, those were the good old days, but those were the day trading heydays too. Uh, 1999, 2000, uh, the boom and the bust of day trading. Um, when it comes to the algos, uh, the HFTs, right? 2011 was pretty much the heyday and the bust of the HFT programs. Um, the biggest HFT firms, they you know, they made huge profits. But as with any, as with any trend. As with anything, once you get transparency, what do you get? You get competition that comes in. And as the law, the law of the markets is that once things become too transparent, okay, what happens? It reverts the other way, be it from regulation, be it from competitors, okay, one thing or another. But like I said, the bottom line here is that the HFTs that are still around, okay, and, and you got your algos, um, they can they can ma magnify a price move. They can distort the price move, okay, and they can magnify the price move. Now, if you're on the right side of that move, it's a beautiful thing. If you're on the wrong side, okay, it's painful. So that's the main thing you have to keep in mind. Okay, and this is all a game. Everyone talks about we want transparency. We want transparency. Okay, if you had 100% transparency, you wouldn't have a market. Everything would be static. Okay, that's just a, that that's just a, you know a notion that every everything should be a level playing field. If everything is a level playing field, you would not have price movements. Okay, it would just be flat. It's static. All right. Listen, Safeway may buy. You know, may, may, may sell fruity pebbles for you know four dollars a box. They don't want to tell you how much they paid for it, all right. And then Giants, they're selling it for uh, you know they got to sell it three seventy five. They don't want to tell you how much they're selling it for. Maybe they're selling fruity pebbles cheaper, okay, but they're bumping up the prices of golden grams, all right. So that's all part of a market. So the name of the game is to capture the transparency before it becomes too transparent, okay. And just remember that concept uh, and that is one of many concepts that that I hold dear to my heart um, so let's talk about these HFTs all right the thunder I call this environment now a thunder and tumbleweeds landscape because of the advent of the HFTs and the algorithm programs what tends to happen is when there is momentum okay and liquidity and price uh, flexibility it, it comes in like thunder okay you know what I'm talking about you know you jump in and uh, the bids are stacked up the the ask is thin and the stock is rising really fast all right it's like thunder and then 30 40 minutes later all right what happens everything dries up again the volume just dries up the algos they step off all right and very likely you maybe you held too long or you stepped in and you got stuck on the wrong side um, but this is the type of market that we're in right now it's thunder and tumbleweeds so once again it's because of all the algo, algo activity out there all the HFTs the movements are very concentrated and then once those concentrated movements are made you literally get liquidity evaporating in the market all right so that's the one thing you always have to keep in mind that there are times when you can play in the market and your prob the probabilities are on your side okay uh, you can be sloppy and still make money and then there are times during the market day um, that you could be on top of your game and still struggle like crazy all right, and this is because of the climates that are generated in this thunder and tumbleweeds landscape, what I call a wet and a dry climate. You can take a pattern 
that plays out beautifully at 9:50 a.m. and you take that you take that same pattern and you try to play it at 12:30 or 1:30 in the afternoon, identical pattern and what was so robust and had amazing magnified follow through in the morning, what happens in the afternoon? It gets it spikes a little bit, it, it gets rigid, and then it just fizzles right out. And then next thing you know, it collapses. Can you guys can you guys hear me? Hello. Okay. All right. So, so my point is, when you play, okay, when you play is just as important as how you play or what you play. If you understand the concept of the thunder and tumbleweeds, naturally you want to play when when the thunder is there, when it's wet. You want to pull back your activity, okay, when the tumbleweeds come in. Sounds very basic, all right? It's very basic, however, you got to be able to identify these periods. So, let me let's delve a little further and talk about the opposition. There's four types of players in the markets when it comes to the trading game, okay? And you've got the visuals right here. You've got the institutions. These are the big guns, right? These are the mutual funds, pension funds, large hedge funds, private equity funds, you know, with at least a mil 100 million in discretionary capital. These are the big guys. Then you have the algorithm and your HFT programs, okay? Now, like I said, the institutions, these are the tanks. These are the bazookas, okay? These are the dinosaurs. And as they say, dinosaurs don't walk in the sand without leaving footprints. The algorithm and the HFT programs, okay, these are, these are the AK-47s. These are the, uh, the, 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 the Gatling guns, okay, the mini guns, okay? They have the advantage of rapid fire and capital, but they have the advantage of speed, the professionals, these are the market makers. Okay, these are the uh, prop firms and the fund traders. They're like snipers, in a sense. What these guys have is the advantage of order flow. Okay, these guys get the order flow from the big institutions. Now, let's also keep in mind these guys institutions will use HFT and algorithm programs. Market makers, they they're the ones who use the HFT programs the most. Okay, you guys have heard of VWAPs. VWAPs, okay, the VWAPs are linked directly with the volume participation programs. This is the most common HFT program that's out there, all right? So the professionals, the market makers, they're using HFTs, institutions, they're using HFTs, but we're going to treat them as a separate entity. And then at the very bottom of that totem pole are your retail traders. And those weapons vary from slingshots, spoons, knives, forks, coat hangers, what have you, okay? <laughs> So, these are the re retail guys. Now, in a wet climate, you have all of these guys in there together. Okay, you've got institutions, you've got algo, HFT programs, you've got professionals, you've got retail traders. When the climate dries up, you've got algorithms, and these are the HFT, these are the apex predators. All right? And you've got retail traders who don't know any better. So I want you to understand something. The notion of you can't bring a knife to a gunfight, that holds true in one sense, but the reality is that the markets are never a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. When you have a lot of participants, what that means for you as a retail trader is that that's less odds of you having the target on your back. When the participants thin out, you stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, and the target gets bigger on your back. So the name of the game, the name of the game is to not have that target on your back. My, 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 my enemy's enemy is my friend. Okay, that's the thing to remember. My enemy's enemy is my friend. It doesn't matter if you have a slingshot, if you have a bottle opener, okay, if you have car keys as a weapon. There's going to be dead carcasses laying around, okay, because of a wet climate, it's a minus sum game, so the majority cannot win at all, all the time. So 
your best probability, your best odds as far as climate's concerned is playing, like I said, playing in that wet climate where you have the most participants, okay? And you can literally pick the food up off the ground. You don't have to go into combat. You don't have to kill anything. So how do we track the climates? How do we, uh, this sounds all good in, in, in theory, Jay, but, you know, how, how do we, um, you know, how do you figure it out, right? How do you figure out the random, supposed random nature of prices? Okay, so this is where you're going to fast forward to what, what I call the rifle charts. And the rifle charts are what I put together through the years. Um, they're very, they're composed of very simple indicators. Okay, Trade Station has all the indicators that you need to, to put together the rifle charts. Now, each of the indicators taken individually, okay, well, you got arguments against each indicator, you know, simple moving averages. Oh, man, simple moving averages, are, you know, they're lame, they're laggard, you know, they're based on history. Give me something that's predictive, right? Bollinger Bands, uh, you know what, they're great, but, you know, what do they really measure? Stochastics. Oh, don't get me started on stochastics, you know, oh, how, you know what, where, where is the, uh, you know, where's the consistency with stochastics? You get one full oscillation down, all right, it's a 25 cent move up, but you get another oscillation up, that's only 10 cents. You know, where's the consistency? Okay, and so people have written off these indicators um, because of their simplicity at times, and basically because, the, you know, they, they haven't understood the value of the cumulative effect. So I'm here to show you that the rifle charts take these household items, but understand something, okay? You're going to look at this stuff, and you, it's very easy to look at the face value or the tip of the iceberg, right? And everything I'm going to show you tonight is going to be tip of the iceberg, okay? There's no doubt about it. I'm going to show you two trade sequences, okay, which are very common trade sequences. Um, on Facebook, okay, and you're going to see the tip of the iceberg. But what separates the good traders from everybody else is that the tip of the iceberg is not the point, okay? That's not the point. The point is what lies beneath. With an iceberg, 80% of that iceberg lies beneath the surface. You get the 20% above water, and that's what everybody sees. Oh, man, look at the, you know, the profits, you know, look, uh, look at the gains. Oh, it played out beautifully, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but in order to get that tip of the iceberg to reach that level, you've got to, number one, acknowledge that there's a whole foundation underneath. And that whole foundation takes effort, okay? It takes preparation. And I'm talking on multiple levels here. But when it comes to your training as a trader, if you read my books, okay, and you view the videos, I put it all together for you, okay, but on a surface level. The underneath, the underbelly, or the, 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 the body, the foundation, takes effort to, to put together, okay, so that if you work at it and you put in the enduring effort, that's when you can break ground, or break water, and make and achieve the surface. So, Going back to the rifle charts, uh, I want you to, like I said, I want you to understand, step back, and, and forget everything you know about moving averages and Bollinger Bands, okay? Forget everything you know about the stochastics, all right? Start from the beginning. We got we to gotta ask ourselves, what is a stock price? Well, a stock price indicates what? It indicates supply and demand, right? It indicates uh, the perceived value of whatever the, uh, the company is, right? Okay, guess what? That's all BS. Throw that out the window. That's literal. Okay, that's tip of the iceberg too, all right? You're going to realize in this game, and this is a game, you can sit there and read as much as you want about the fundamentals, and hey, you know what? If you're an investor, if you're an investor, all right, come earnings time, you may be proven right or proven wrong, okay? But the reality is that stock prices fluctuate. They are connected. They're connected to what? The general market indexes, the benchmarks. 70% of a stock's price move is going to be based on what the SPY does. 
right, or the S&P 500 futures, unless there's some news out that day. If there's news out that day, then that correlation is going to drop a little bit. But the reality is the company is likely the same company yesterday that it was today, that it was the day before. Okay, but why is there a six-point differential? Why did Facebook you know, collapse three points today? Okay, what about the buyers at 63.90 yesterday? Now it's trading, you know, under what, under uh, 59.40? Okay, did Facebook something happen to Facebook? No. Okay, this is just part of the game. And a stock, okay, a stock is is going to fluctuate. The prices are going to fluctuate. The range of that fluctuation, okay, is what matters. The range and the direction. And in trading, all we're trying to do is capture a piece of that price move. Okay? This is trading. It's not investing. It's not uh, being an analyst or any of that stuff. And in order to capture that, we need to have a tool, a basic tool, that's going to, number one, give us the trend, the range, okay? And then give us an engine, a momentum indicator. Now... You take that, and if you understand the, the, the law of um, the law of foreshadowing, okay, and the law of convergence, you also understand that what works on a smaller time frame will also work on a larger time frame. In fact, if there's a pattern that's so good that works on a smaller time frame, and it's very uh, um, efficient and effective. Okay, if it works on a smaller time frame, it'll work on a larger time frame. However, the difference is going to be the price range and the time it takes for that move to be made. So, this is what the rifle charts are. We have your 5, 15 period moving averages. Okay, your 5 is in yellow here, your 15 is in, in green. Okay, and then we have our Bollinger Bands. We have our upper and lower Bollinger Bands. Okay, and that indicates the range, and more importantly, when there's a compression and then there's an expansion of the Bollinger Bands. That's the thing you've got to keep in mind. Bollinger Bands, they'll compress when the range gets tight, and then they'll expand and trend okay, when the price breaks out or breaks down. And then we have our stochastics. And the stochastics is a momentum indicator. And your, your, your classic basic definition... Okay, and your classic, your, your basic definition is when you get above the 80 band, all right, it's overbought. When you get below the 20 band, it's oversold, all right, and that's your classic definition. Now, keep in mind, we're not trying to capture, you know, every single move. We're not trying to interpret every single move. The point is, what we're trying to do is capture the move, okay, prior to the Explosive move, okay. Um, the highest probability point where a move is going to be made, and we can measure that with the Bollinger Bands and the stochastics. So, we got our uh, rifle chart set up here, okay. In order to set these up on your tra on trade station, your simple moving averages are going to be five 15 periods stochastics. Set that to 15, 3, 5. Bollinger Bands are 20 period and two standard deviations. All right, and I put those on seven different time frames from the 1, 5, 15, 60 minute, and daily, and that's on the intraday, and then the weekly, monthly on the wider time frames. And the wider time frames give me a heads up on the um, uh, bumpers and any of the larger type of patterns that may be forming. So, this is what a wider, t this I'm sorry, this is what a rifle chart looks like, and I'm going to tell you what a mini pup pattern is, okay? So when you take the stochastics, whenever you get a stock price that rises or sells off, you're going to get an oscillation on the stochastics, obviously, okay? So when you get the stochastics that rise and then they rise and then they stall, what's going to happen is the stock price takes a move up, it peaks, it pulls back, and it's going to retest that five period moving average. When it retests that five period moving average, it can either cross down on the stochastics, okay, 
and tighten back down, or it's going to stall, suck in the bears, suck in the shorts, okay, and then hook back up and form what's known as a mini pup. And when that mini pup forms, what's going to happen is it's going to break through the counter candle. So the counter candle are your opposite candles that come in after a series of, say, green candles, all right? So you have your trending candles, and then you have your candle, counter candles. When the stochastics don't cross back down, what happens is you get a mini pup. When they break the price, okay, of the high of the body high of the counter candle, and that's where you get your mini pup, and then you get your spikes towards the upper Bollinger bands, okay. And you can utilize the upper Bollinger bands and various bumpers. Okay, the, and the bumpers are going to be your 515 and your bump, uh, upper lower Bollinger Bands on your wider time frames and use that to exit into the liquidity. So this is what a mini pup looks like. Okay, mini pup, boom, boom. All right. And whenever you have mini pups to the upside or to the downside, you're going to have that five period moving average is sloping up. And as it slopes up, it's going to get tested. Okay, now the stronger trends... The stronger trends, you're barely going to get a test, okay? When it starts to overshoot each time, that's when you want to stay out because look at the compression that forms on the Bollinger Bands, okay? You want to stay out of that shop, wait for a, a, a clear signal, and then when you get the mini pup, boom, that's when you want to hit it. Um, hey, Al, do me a favor, okay? Can you save your questions till the end? And uh, as far as order data, okay, I, 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 I don't, I'm not sure what you're talking about. If you're talking about time of sales, the actual trades, that's all we use, okay? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by order data, but uh, we utilize time of sales, the trades that are actually printed, okay? So the other thing you want to keep in mind is... Um, you know, last three days, with the exception of today, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in the pre-market, SPY has been getting a lot of um, missed ticks, almost a point below where it's trading in the pre-market, and that's a measure. That, that, that's a, a sneaky method of um, missed tick manipulation, where when you when you print a very low tick, okay, when you print a very low tick, um, what that does is tries to form a hammer and forms a a hammer and then the very next trade goes right back to the normal tape and so by doing that what they do is they keep those stochastics and those moving averages up it's very funny because today I didn't see any of those low ticks uh, the miss ticks but if you go back and take a look at your charts okay if you have the pre-market data you'll see the low ticks every morning before 930 on that 60 minute chart all right so let me add one more thing here all right this is this is a spy, and here's your mini pup, okay? But what I also have included here is the market structure low. And a market structure, a market structure is a, uh, a type of signal. It's a, it's a pure price action reversal signal where when you get a series of, say, red candles, okay, you want to get down to a new low, a lower low, and then a higher low, okay? When you get the new low, a lower low, and a higher low, the high of that higher low candle, right there, bang, you can place a uh, trend line and use that trend line as the market structure low. And that market structure low allows you or tells you that there's a reversal that's, that could happen, okay, that's about to happen, that could happen. And the same thing happens on a market structure high. It's a three candle, it's a three candle sequence where you get a new high, a higher high, and then a lower high. And the low of that high Okay, is going to be your market structure high trigger. And if that breaks, that's where you want to short it. Now, we don't use just that alone. We use a combination of that and then the mini pups or a mini inverse pup. All right, so in this situation right here, we have the SPY sell off. Okay, it puts in a hammer. And then we have the market structure low signal. Okay, but more importantly, we have the stochastics that not only bounces up through the 20 band, Peaks, tries to make a pullback, and notice how the one minute five slopes up, and then boom, you get the counter candle break, and then it forms a mini pup, which you can then ride it up with the stochastics. All right, so now 
what I want to do is let's just take a look at a trade sequence here. All right, so this is Facebook, okay? All right, so we take a look at Facebook right here, and we have the SPY 1515 minute in the lower set of charts. We have the 1515 on Facebook on the top charts, okay? So right off the bat, this setup, and this is a very common setup, okay? There, there's setups like this today all day long on Facebook. What we have is a 15-minute stochastics already form a mini inverse pup. Five minute already forms a mini inverse pup. And the only thing now is that you got your one minute that's already peaked, pulled back, and then it's starting to form a mini inverse pup right now. Okay? So this is a situation where you already have a perfect storm. However, no stock, especially Facebook or any of your uh, widely traded stocks, stands alone by itself. And like I said, on any given day, 70% of its move is going to be correlated to the spy. Well, if we look at the SPY here, we notice the SPY actually has a 15-minute pup, a one-minute mini pup, okay, a five, I'm sorry, five-minute mini pup, and then a one-minute pup breakout. So now we see that the SPY, the Facebook is actually self-fading the SPY. And what that means is as the SPY is rising, Facebook is actually selling off or it's not rising, okay? So it's called a sell fade. Now, the, what that means is if the SPY, when the SPY peaks out and comes back down, what should happen to Facebook? It should sell off even harder. All right? Normally, you would get the SPY to move up, and then Facebook moves up. And if you overlap their charts, they should normally move together. When you have extensive selling on, on Facebook while the SPY is rising, that tells you that, the, uh, whoever you know the sellers are, <coughs> excuse me, they're not just going with the flow. Okay, apparently they have so many shares they need to unload that they're going to use this natural uptick that that happens on Facebook. Okay, with the spy buying, you know, use that as an opportunity to grab liquidity and sell into. This is what we spot with the rifle charts when we look at the mini inverse pups. So as this plays out, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sell short into the into the spy rise on Facebook okay I'm just gonna sell it short and the way these mini pups work is they're gonna test that one minute five okay at 66.73 they're gonna test it if they pop it and then they slip it back down under what that then does is then it goes ahead and lights the fuse and re-triggers the mini inverse pup when that mini inverse pup forms Okay, what's going to happen is you look at your five-minute chart and you're going to see the mini inverse pup already looming right there and a 15-minute looming right there. In other words, you turn around and there's nothing there that can save Facebook. And as we look at the SPY, okay, once the SPY starts to slow down, then we're going to start to see the real effects on Facebook. Now, the one-minute is setting up, forms a mini inverse pup. Now it's starting to down tick, starting to sell off. And you can see right here, okay, all lanes, and a lane is a lane is the um, time frame for the rifle chart. Okay, all lanes are down, meaning all the stochastics are down. So we're going ahead and putting in limit limit orders to cover. Okay, while Facebook is just can't get one foot out of the grave. And you notice that the SPY is still trying to rise. Okay, now the convergence of the lanes is very important. That's what a perfect storm is. So whereas you get one lane coming down, you okay, the other lanes, you want to make sure that they're also down as well. And when you get down lanes on three or more with the with these mini inverse pups, that's when you end up with a very clear, transparent move to the downside. And you can see that the spy, they're just they're just inching this thing up, inching this thing up. Now, when you watch the the 20 band, when the one minute slips down slips down through the 20 band, okay, 
that's when you're going to get some type of, of, of a climactic sell-off. Now, on the Bollinger Bands, notice on the SPY how the one minute when it was expanding was rising. The moment you get that hook down on the one minute, that tells you that a compression is coming in. And so when that compression comes in, you're going to get pullbacks on the SPY. And then as the SPY pulls back, that's when you're going to get the lean down, okay, the lean down on whatever stocks that have a perfect storm is. And look at the 80 band. Now the SPY slips to 1 minute 5. Now it's starting to lean through the 80 band. And then on Facebook, you have the leans. And notice that if they coil and try to bounce that 68, 63, they can't do it. And when it rejects, all that does is it opens up another trap door. And then you get the mini inverse pup that sets up. And, and you get liquidity into the sellers. So the limits are, are getting hit. Well, the limits will be getting hit. And there you go. Boom. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. See that? Boom. See that quick lean down to that 6640, 6636, 6640. All right. You see that? Okay. That's the result of a perfect storm. Boom. Liquidity. All right. And if you have a level two, you can see it. You can see it very, very strongly. Okay. Boom. We had so many of these today on Facebook. So three lane perfect storm breakdown on Facebook. We, had, we got our 15 minute mini inverse pup, your five minute mini inverse pup, and your one minute mini inverse pup. 3,000 shares in, 6872, covered 57, 6854, 51, uh, blah, 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 540 profits, pretty much in under four minutes because of the perfect storm setup. Okay? And all it takes is a small downtick to magnify the impact of that move. So that's what a perfect storm looks like on a breakdown, as evidenced by Facebook. All right, now, let's take a look at another one. All right, this is one of our alerts that we played in the chat room. All right, right here, we shorted 1,500 shares of LVS, okay? And LVS was very, very strong, but what happened was LVS uh, grinded. They held it above the um, 80 band on the 15 and the 5 minute for an extended duration of time, even on the 1 minute, okay? 5 minute, 5 period moving average sits at 83.55. You notice that LVS, we didn't short the top of LVS, okay? We let LVS peak, pop, pull back, and when it slipped under the five period moving average, okay, when it slips under the five period moving average and gets that five period moving average to start sloping down, that now acts as a cap, a manhole cover, all right? And when it slows down, that means you're going to get lower highs. Each pop gets a lower high, gets a lower high, gets a lower high. When you get the rejection that forms and breaks through the body low of the counter candle, that's when you get a mini inverse pup trigger that triggers. For what? For the next bumpers down, okay? For the 15, for the 20, right? Or for the lower Bollinger Bands, all right? So that's our main premise. We got our 15 that peaked out. We got our five minute that slipped, coiled, rejected, and now is getting muscled down with a mini inverse pup, okay? So this prompts our short here. Uh, 1,500 shares at 83.45 on LVS. Now, you look at the one-minute chart, and you see if, if you're only going by the one-minute chart, you know, you may say to yourself, yeah, but, Jay, you know, hasn't this thing already dumped? Okay, the one-minute's trying to coil here. Um, watch out for the one-minute. True, however, the wider your time frames are, the more powerful their bumpers are going to be. Whenever I get a five-minute five, five that slopes that five-period moving average down, okay, that tells me a lot. That means that the sellers, they're getting anxious. So they're lowering their asks. They're lowering their asks. They're lowering their asks. Okay? So you get smaller, you get smaller highs, lower highs on each pop attempt. 
Now, when the 15 also peaks out on the stochastics, once again, it's the same thing. Eventually, if that 5 doesn't break, that's also going to start to slope down and give us lower highs. So on this premise, we went ahead and shorted 1,500 shares. <coughs> Excuse me. When we look at the SPY, the SPY is actually, you know, in a 15-minute pup, 5-minute pup, 1-minute pup breakout. So SPY is actually in a perfect storm. Okay, so with the SPY in a perfect storm, you might say to yourself, uh, it's a little sketchy, LVS moves to SPY, 70% correlated moves, SPY is looking like it's going to go higher, why would you short here? Once again, that's the value of utilizing multiple time frames, wider time frames, all right? So with that wider time frame, 5 minute, 5 sloping down, okay, 15 minute also, peaking out on the stochastics, what it does is it gives us some resistance here. Okay, it gives us some resistance, number one, against the buyers or the bulls that may come in and try to pop, prop it up. right? But number two, it also gives us time. Now, what would our stops be? Our stops would be if they got the five minute to cross back up. If they sp spike it up through that 8350, held it, pulled it back, held the the five minute five period moving average long enough for the five to start to cross up then we then we would have then our stops would trigger because then we don't want to sit we don't want to sit through a potential pup breakout okay but at this point it's very nice that it is actually fading the spy okay and this is a pretty excessive grind to the upside on LVS all right so you know that's why LVS at one, when, once you get a move like this, okay, and it spikes, peaks, and pulls back, okay, and keep in mind that a market structure high, new high, right, higher high, actually new high, higher high, and the lower high, okay, and so the low of that is 83.50, I'm, I'm sorry, 83.05, so 83.05 is going to be your lower high and your market structure high trigger, Okay, if LVS can break 83.05. All I'm looking for is a reversion down. Okay, we got the pop, peak, and now I'm looking for a reversion back down towards that 83.05 area. So now the 15 minute is testing the 80 band. You got your 5 minute, 5 sloping down. And the 5 minute, 5 just updated to the downside. Okay, notice that five minutes just updated to the downside. You see the five minute candle trying real hard to get to, to try to stay above that five minute five. Remember, candle closes are what matters here. Okay, and that five minute five overlaps with the 15 five. But understand something the bulls by default were able to hold it and get the can get the uh, stock above the five minute five briefly. By default, simply because of the candle update and the moving average update subsequently. However, if they cannot hold above that five minute five period moving average going into the close, or if it slips at five minute five, that's a trap door. And if that trap door opens up, instead of the five minute stochastics crossing up, what is it? What do we do? It mini inverse pup and slips. When you look at the one minute, that's your fuse. And when the one minute peaks and slips, starts to cross down. That's when this detonates, this detonates, this. So we're placing limit buy orders now, 500 shares apiece, 83, 23, 17, and 07. And the one minute, once it crosses down, that's when you're going to get the move. Now, this is a sell fade. So knowing that we have a sell fade, and all you got to do to know if you have a sell fade, guys, is just look at the charts. Let's look at the stochastics. Five minutes coming down on LVS. Five minutes been rising on SPY. So it's a sell fade. As a SPY peaks or, or forms any type of reversion, the selling pressure is going to increase and magnify on whatever stock is sell fading. And here's the leans. One minute stochastics crosses down. And you can see the sellers coming in. And you can see, you can see the limit orders starting to get hit. So now the one minute is definitely crossed down. 
15 minute of uh, five minute is mini inverse pupping right here. It's breaking through the 20 the 20 band coming down mini inverse pup, and then the 15 minute is crossing down at the 80 band. So we covered two of two of the limits, I believe, 83.15 and 83.20 something. Okay, we still have a limit at 83.07, but at this point we, we we clipped out two two parts. We have one part left. Now, as far as the spy is concerned, take a look at the spy. You'll notice right here you have a new a, a new high, a higher high, and a lower high. The the lower high. I'd say that's around 187, what, 90, 93, 92. If they break that lower high, that forms a one-minute market structure high. And when that happens, combined with the stochastic slip, you're going to get a downdraft in the SPY. Okay? We utilize the SPY simultaneously, hand-in-hand, -hand, with whatever stock we're watching. We use it as a benchmark. Okay? When you have something to use as a benchmark, it's either going to be doing one of two things. It's going to be correlating or converged with the SPY, or it's going to be diverged with the SPY. All right? When you have a divergence, you have opportunities for what? Well, to magnify that divergence once the SPY slips, or, number two, to get in, because ultimately it's going to correlate again, so to try to find a spot to get in, so that when it recorrelates with the SPY, okay, you'll have some profits. And that's the main reason why we have a benchmark. That's the main reason why we utilize a SPY or the futures. Okay, a lot of people like to use the ES, you know, or, or the uh, or, or the Nasdaq futures. Okay, it's and it's all for the purpose of having a benchmark and something to measure against. Okay, it's you know how 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 else would you be able to contrast you know what the general move is and whether something is buy fading or sell fading, right? You got to have a benchmark. So, on LVS, you have the, the coil, that test of 1 minute 5, okay? Notice how the Bollinger Bands are getting tight here. However, there's no fear right now because I have a 5 minute that's formed the mini inverse pup. When they reject the 1 minute 5, this is, these are buyers that come in. They're like, hey, let's go. You know, this looks like a bottom. Let's go in. Let's step in. And when they can't break that 1 minute 5 and reject, all that does is it slaps those buyers right back down it deflects the buyers and then when you break the low that opens up the trap door counter candle breaks and then you get the sell off and now look at this one minute mini inverse pop right five minute mini inverse pop okay we're filled 8307 that's taken out and look at look, look at lvs tank 8280s 82 you know 8290 overshoots 8280s mini inverse pop mini inverse pop Test re rejection mini inverse pup, and there's your perfect storm. Okay, your perfect storm breakdown. Now understand that when you see a perfect storm like this, okay, that's when the transparency's been hit. The key to this game is grabbing two of these lanes, okay, and then timing your entry on the third lane, oftentimes to trigger the one minute lane. Got it? So you want to you want to grab the one minute as your trigger and make sure you already have what's lurking underneath the water on the wider time frames, the mini pups that are in your favor. So just to sum up, LVS perfect storm. It's what we call a tightening perfect storm because it's not a brand new breakdown. What it's doing is it's an exhaustion that's now tightening between the channels, okay, of the wider. The greater uptrend is getting a pullback, but the shorter time frames are showing a breakdown. So we had our 15-minute mini inverse pup. We have our 5-minute mini inverse pup, our 1-minute mini inverse pup, 5-minute market structure high. Now, you notice, guys, you notice how this thing collapsed when 83.05 broke. Why is that? Because that is your market structure low trigger. You see that right there? When they break it, even by one tick, you're going to get a, a, a panic Sell off, market structure low trigger, okay, and that's what a perfect storm breakdown looks like. Um, so LVS, everything lined up. Once again, get your wider time frames and then time your smaller time frames. Okay, so there's your perfect storms. 
um, and perfect storm breakdowns. And there's many, many different variations of perfect storms. All right. Like I said, this is what we call a tightening perfect storm, where the wider time frame may be in an uptrend still, but the shorter time frames are working the exhaustion and the tightening down below. <laughs> when you're trading intraday, all right, that's what we look for. We look, we utilize the shorter time frames in the range of the wider time frames. And if the wider time frames are giving us some type of a, a heads up in the form of a pup or a mini pup, that that oftentimes will give us a foreshadowing Doppler effect. Okay, but failing that, wider time frames just simply provide us a range, and shorter time frames allow us to play within that range. All right, gang. So in a nutshell, um, that is the result of efficient training. All right. There's four stages to trader evolution. Um, you have your initial acclimation stage. It's where you just learn the basics and the building blocks, the mechanics of the tools, the markets, the components, the mechanics of the markets, price action. This is where you get acclimated. And, and you know what? Oftentimes, people start the acclimation stage okay. All right? They start off on the right track, and they say, all right, I'm going to get everything down. Everything down. Okay, this is what a you know, this is what a market is. All right, this is what a moving average is. This is what uh, you know a cup and handle looks like. Blah blah blah. Okay, and then they tend to speed up too fast, put the cart in front of the horse, and the acclimation stage. That, well, that's all nice, and you've got to start off with the most basic building blocks. Okay, when it comes to evolution, it's got to be gradual, and a lot of that gradual growth comes from the conditioning once you get to that conditioning stage and that's where you start to put the concepts uh, you start to put the setups okay um, you try to take the, the square holes or the square pieces and simply wait for the square holes to come by you don't try to curve fit the square the squares into the triangle holes or the round holes okay so you you have to build your template gradually and you got to build that template um, you, you have you have to nurture the evolution you got to nurture that template and then as you get that conditioning process down and you're able to understand the methods under, you're able to understand the mechanics of why the price prices move the way they do okay you don't have to try to explain every part of it okay but understand something this is if you, if you can just Think of, uh, you know, the HFTs and the algos. Well, how do they make their money? They make their money by stealing the liquidity when it's most needed, all right? And when it's most needed, it's going to be, and when it's most needed, is going to be when the most participants are trapped on the wrong side, all right? So when they're trapped on the wrong side. So always keep that in the back of your mind. So the conditioning process and this is where you simply repeat the templates, repeat the behavior, okay? And you repeat them in the in in the context, well, in, in the right context, okay? As far as the the uh, you know, the landscape, the thunder and tumbleweeds, but the wet and the dry climates, get your pacing down, all right? And after you do these enough, then you get to the seasoning process where you've got everything under your belt, everything's familiar. And you are uh, improving your maneuverability, your awareness, your intuitive foresight, tempered with razor sharp reactions. Your intuition grows, grows more refined, all right? And the shifting between the time frames becomes seamless. And you're focused on optimization. And then the last stage is specialization. Laser beam precision, you're fine tuned. And you may decide to specialize in five different stocks. Okay, Facebook may be your bread and butter every day, all right, where you're playing reversions, you know, two or three reversions off these market structure signals with a with a, you know, a plan A setup, all right, specialization. And that takes time, that takes effort, and it takes a lot of watching, but knowing what to watch, all right. So going back to what I said about the iceberg, okay, what you saw here today with the videos, that's the surface of the iceberg. Okay. Um, the bottom or the the base 
is what matters. You need to galvanize the foundation. If you galvanize that foundation, okay, then the profits and an income stream and consistency, that's not your goal. Understand that. Okay, when you think in literal terms, you may think, oh, man, I need to make so much money every day. This is what I need to make. You, if you think in that sense, you're going to, well, you're going to fail. Okay, you have to understand that when you focus on galvanizing the foundation, then a little byproduct, a funny little byproduct tends to happen okay, when you're not really looking. And that's this, consistency and income stream. And that comes from focusing on this. So the surface results are the byproduct. And remember that. And use that and think in those terms. Profits, consistency, everything you want. Well, guess what? It's a byproduct of the process. Okay? All right. So what, what all this boils down to okay, is the training. You need specialized training in today's landscape, in this market environment, not... You know, not, not stuff with five-year-old charts in it, okay? Stuff that is current, stuff that is working right now in this environment, stuff that's practiced every day, all right? That's what, what I do every day, what we do every day. And that's what Alpha 7 Trading Academy's exclusive trade training program is. All right, our video course alone has over 30 hours. You have over 600 slides, live action, captioned videos. Everything's been meticulously designed, structured, so that you can grow at your own pace, in a lateral, progressive, and depth-engaging approach to organically cultivate your evolution towards becoming a seasoned trader. Okay? All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to John. John, if you're there. Sorry, my mic. Here we go. Can you guys hear me? Okay, sorry, I couldn't get my mic going. Hi guys, uh, thanks for thanks for having us on here. Um, can you hear me? Okay. I, okay, perfect. Okay, great. So thanks, guys. Hey, I wanted to just uh, thank everybody for coming. I thought that was a great uh, presentation for any of you that saw um, 60 Minutes earlier this week uh, and the the piece that they did on 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 uh, institutional traders. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so I just wanted to say hello. My name is John Bullock. I work with TradeStation. I'm a director of business development here. And um, I have a slide I was going to try to show you, but I don't think I can get it to show right now. But we've set up a commission rebate program. So for any of you that sign up or want to enroll in any of the courses with Jay and Alpha 7 Trading Academy, um, we have a, a special offer. And, and maybe we can follow up with you guys with an email with the specifics of it. But um, we have a promotion for anybody that signs up where we'll give you um, our normal $99, $95 platform fee waived for um, the life of your account with TradeStation and then up to a $500 commission rebate to help reimburse you for the cost of any classes that you sign up with um, Alpha 7. And then on top of that, if you sign up for something that's uh, in excess of $500, we also have a 20% commission rebate program which um, doesn't have an expiration date and we will give you back 20% of your commissions each month up until you've paid back um, the cost of any courses that you've signed up with, with Alpha 7. So um, th that's available for anybody. They have a ton of great content. Um, Jay has a, has a great book also. And, uh, you know, I thought he did a great job. And, and all of this information is available on TradeStation. So what I'll do is um, I'll put my email address in the chat window if anybody has a question, wants to follow up with me on email. And then... Um, We'll, we'll get a follow-up email with the specifics of how the commission rebate program works um, out to you guys probably either tonight or tomorrow. So, so that's it. I just want to say thanks for having me, and um, I'll send that information out to you. And then, Jay, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to you. All right. Thanks, John. And uh, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I know it's been a long day, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, once again, I thank uh, TradeStation for a great platform and Alpha 7 for putting this stuff together. Um, and enjoy your evening. Have a relaxing evening, and I'll talk to some of you guys later.